give me a minute here. I'm trying to think of a good intro. Maybe we start with like five minutes of monologue before you even get a sniff of any action. I don't know. Welcome back, y'all, to another high adventure video, as promised, back on the salt water for our salt water series. See that right there, y'all? That is one of two crab pots that we have had out overnight. That's like our side quest in today's video. The main quest is out in the big water. First time for me, by the way. But we're gonna start off by checking the pots we left out overnight and uh, see if we got lucky. Anchors up right here. Ugh. All right, here we go. This is in deep water. We're like 20 feet right here. <sighs> Woo. Oh yeah, oh my goodness, we loaded up. Oh, I see some stone crabs. <gasps> yes, look at that, I got one, two, three. Oh, I guarantee you all those are keepers if they've got both claws. Dude, all three stone crabs have their claws. Boom, Ooh, is that not a dandy or what? Oh, we got some big ones. I think all the blue crabs, well, that one might be a keeper right there. But we got a couple other little blue crabs. But look at this guy, look at this guy right here. Oh, is that not a pretty sight? We get to keep a claw. We're gonna get three claws. Sweet. A shell on the top, I don't know. Now stone crabs, for those of you who don't know, you cannot keep uh, the entire crab. You could keep one claw, but the only way you could keep one claw, one second, let me get all this out. The only way you could keep one claw, I don't want all that chicken in there, that stuff is nasty now is if they have both claws. And then the claw has to be like two and three quarter inches, I believe. We'll double check that. But I guarantee you all of those are two and three quarter inches. Just about guarantee it. Let's set our pot back here. We're gonna pull them up for now because we're gonna head to a different location after this for our second quest. Let's go ahead. Oh, tapers. Do you see that? Good knit. There we go. That guy's too small. Female anyway. I'll drop her back in. That one is also just a little small. Another female. Drop her back in. Forgot my tongs back at camp because we cooked up a mess of crab last night. That's usually what I use to grab the crab, but uh, it's a nice little blue crab. We're going to keep that. Here's the prize of the morning though, y'all. Look at that. Three gorgeous stone crabs and they all have their claws which means we get to take a claw from each one and i guarantee you those are all two and three quarters in length like this guy right here i have to cut it off right there at the joint to the tip it's got to be two and three quarters look at that that's that's almost five inches long i think with this guy i mean that's yeah those are all big and the cool thing about this is is you get to pick which side you want so obviously you want to pick the biggest one so in this case like this guy left one is bigger i think so yeah that one's bigger than that the left one's bigger than the right this guy the right's bigger than the left and this guy the right is bigger than the left as well Ooh, look at that yes cool all right let's grab our knife take some uh claws off here there we go there's one crab claw he goes drops right back in there we go another nice claw Take a look at that, y'all. Look at that. Three big old stone crab claws. We're gonna drop that right on ice. And that is gonna taste amazing later on. That might be supper right there. I've got my blue crab on our uh, little brown paper bag. That way he doesn't freeze on the ice. You know, I guess we'll just set the stone claws. Actually, no, I wanna put those on the ice. There we go. Sweet. All right, let's go check the second trap. See what we got in there. There we go. That was a gar right there. A big old gar just came up. This one's not quite as deep. Probably in about 10, 11 feet of water would be my guess. What do we got? Yeah, we got a few crab in here. Not a lot. Not a lot. Not even sure if we got any keepers in there to be... Well, yeah, we might have a couple keepers in there. Oh, you lucky. You lucky by about... Maybe a fourth of an inch. Out you go. If that one ain't a keeper, that one ain't. These will all be keepers probably by about fall time. And fall time is typically the best time to go crabbing. 
You're not a keeper. We might have one right over here in the corner. By golly, it is five and a quarter inches. Hey, we got one. Got a male and a female. Cool. Well, oh, hey, oh. Sorry about that. Not a bad morning haul, y'all. Three stone crabs, couple of blues. Sweet. That's gonna taste delicious later. Side quest one complete. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are heading to get bait. However, I have run aground on a sandbar that was not here the last time I was here. So we gotta hurry because the tide's still falling and we are floating a little bit here. Hey, at least it's sandy. Whew. Hit it going about 20 miles an hour. Hopefully we'll be back on our way in no time. Crop is still intact, that's good. I mean, it's just all sand. This is what we're on. Yeah. So, pretty soft stuff, fortunately. And we've still got about another hour before low tide. If it were about an hour later, we might be real in real trouble. But fortunately, it looks like this is the drop off. Here we go. Oh, Whew. oh man. Well, so I always gotta be careful. I don't know if you guys can see that behind me, but you can see it's just like boom, 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 boom. Gotta stay on this side. <sighs> well, that was exciting. Hopefully we don't have any more uh, unexpected things like that come up. We're almost to our bait spot, so. All right, reached our bait spot. Time to throw the old deckhand boots on. All right, so we're heading offshore tomorrow. And I have been tasked with getting chum for said trip. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be hitting these creeks and hopefully just loading the boat with a ton of mullet. I also believe that we're going to be using it for bait as well. So I have been told, though, to just get a boatload of it. So we're going to do our best here. Oh, that was a terrible throw. Nice job. Oh wait, is that mullet or is that shrimp? Might be shrimp hitting the surface. You queeks a kooka tum -dee. No, there's some mullet in there. Not a lot. There's about half a dozen finger mullet. Drop them on the deck. Come on. Holy cow, look at this. Look at this fish, y'all. Check that out. That is cool. I've never seen anything like that. Somebody tell me what that is. Wow. Drop them back in. That was really cool. Never know what you'll get in the old cast net. Oh my lord, have mercy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Found the man, Hayden. Good grief. Look at all that. I think that'll do nicely. Oh, I got a big old, uh, I got a big old mullet in there too. All right, take a look. We're getting a nice mix of the man, Hayden and the uh, little mullet. I've heard though the Manhattan gets mushy, so we're gonna get these guys on ice right away. Got some decent sized shrimp, but not today. Throw those out. We're gonna try to keep targeting these guys right here so we can fill up our little ice bag. Good start. Good start to filling up the bag. <laughs> All right, y'all. Hopefully that is enough bait and chum. That is just chalk. Full. Probably about 70% manhaden at 30% uh, other small bait fish, including that uh, mullet. So I'm going to drop this on ice. And I think mission complete for the day. Quest number two is done. All right. We have a pot of boiling water filled with spices. Oh, my heavens. Yeah, that's rolling boiling. Definition of rolling boiling. I'm just gonna drop that right in there. Look, he's asleep. He doesn't even know what hit him. Just bam, he's gone. And look at those claws. Ooh, dropping those in as well. I'm gonna give all that about 20 minutes. Keep it boiled up. And we're gonna be ready for a little fresh crab feast. All right, been 20 minutes. This should be done. Let's take the lid off here. Ooh, I see floating crab. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Oh, too much steam. That's what I'm talking about. I'll ladle that right out onto our plate. A couple of blue crab as well. 
Check this out, y'all. We've even got fancy butter. This is that Kerrygold, that Irish butter. And it's actually a garlic butter. So what I've done, got a little bit of lemon here. So we're gonna have a little lemon, garlic, butter. Boom, perfect. Say a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Lord, I just pray that you would keep us in safety tomorrow as we're out on the boat. Just, I pray you'd bless our efforts with success. Thank you so much for this life that we live. Through Jesus we pray, amen. Well, of course, we gotta start with that. I mean, get out of here. Tell you what, in the summertime down here at the coast, you just gotta constantly keep drinking throughout the day. I've probably had like nine waters, couple of Gatorades, chocolate milk, couple teas. Like, you just gotta keep going. You just can't slow down on the water. As soon as you get behind, it's just about game over. Oh, Y'all, these claws are so big. Like, the shell is so thick. It's like armor, dude. Well, of course it's armor, but like heavy duty armor. In RuneScape terms, it's like probably about like adamant armor. Not quite as weak as Mithrail, but not quite uh, rune armor. Ooh, big old chunk right there. Goes into the butter. Dang, that's good. Look at all that meat inside that claw right there. Tad gum. Let's go for a blue crab now. Now, you might not quite have the same size. <laughs> but you know what? It's not about the size of the dog in the fight. In the words of Yoda, size matters not. This little brute blue crab, what he doesn't make up for a lot of meat. And meat is super sweet. And doesn't need butter in my opinion. I mean, good with butter, but doesn't need it. Nice chunk right there. And to think some people think that's too much work. Mm. Well, more for us. Oh. It is time to sit back and enjoy a nice cool breeze blowing on us. I tell what y'all, this guy right here has been an absolute life saver down here at the coast. It's going to be a low of 82 tonight. And in this tent, I'll bet it's like 84, 85. But having this thing right here, piped out the tent, blowing like 65 degree air on us, it's heaven. It's heaven at what it is. And you can't sleep out under the stars because the mosquitoes are so bad down here at the coast. Oh my gosh. Like you will get eaten alive. Ooh, that feels amazing. I better go get some sleep. I'll catch you guys probably at like five o'clock in the morning. We have arrived. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this. I'm pumped. Oh, woo. Gorgeous morning out here. Gorgeous. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Well, how are you? Dude, I'm phenomenal. Get a nice little tent sleep last night. Oh yeah, man. That AC going. How you doing, sir? I appreciate you letting me come tag yeah, along. Yeah, you got Cinnabons, is that? Yeah, you want one? No, I, dude. I, I, I'm, let me see how I am about halfway through the trip before I oh, down a Cinnabon. Grass. Ooh. Does the boat have a name? Do it all. Do it all. There you go. Do everything in this boat. I like it. Holy cow. How, how do you get run over in a parking lot? That's what I want to know. <laughs> that was a slow bird. That's yeah. natural, natural selection going on here. Look at that sun's just come up. Woo. All right, this is what 22 feet you said? Roughly. Approximate. Yeah. Am I driving out? Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking a nap. Yeah. <laughs> that how long of a drive we got? It'll depend on how bad it is. Okay. To get out there. That's fair. Uh, if it's flat, you can get out there in probably less than an hour. Cool. Here we go. I'm gonna grab us some bait here. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, momentous occasion 
This is the High Adventure's first sea, deep sea fishing video ever on my channel. So we're breaking history, making history, breaking ground, whatever. I've heard it both ways. Dropping this all the way to the bottom. Bobby, how deep is it right here? 94 feet. 94 feet. Good heavens to Betsy. I'm gonna tighten that drag up a little bit. Good grief. Loaded into it. I might have gotten a little overzealous with the amount of bait I put on my. I mean, are you? Oh, hey. Vermilion beeliner. Yep. What's that called? It's called a vermilion snapper, aka beeliner. Are those, do, uh, does that, yeah. is that what we're after today? No, no that's fish not, taco. well, they are a type of snapper, but. Okay. They, they make about the best fish taco. Yeah, they're good. It's not the type that you can only catch one and done. Correct. Okay. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Nice. Like a 15 incher. Hold up, Bobby, show me what you're using here. What you got? Got a little slow pitch jig. Oh, cool. Four, just, four ounce lead. Yeah, you just dropping that down? Yeah, do a little jigging. Cool. Get a small chunk of mullet out on the next one. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's dude it there. That's it. holy cow dude he just <laughs> that's the you got a donkey <laughs> on on that one it out of my no, oh, yeah. what is that what is that what you got freaking albaco jack kill me albaco jack cool now what is that it's a type of jack yeah, obviously is it edible i ain't eating it yeah i'm gonna eat them yeah Cool. I've never seen somebody so angry at catching a decent <laughs> fish before. There he is. There you go. There's a fish. <laughs> He's digging. Now we're cooking. The finger of high adventure's putting in work now. I just got to haul him out of 95 feet. There, I see some color down there. What do we got? Maybe a red snapper. No, that's a trigger fish. Oh man. That's good eating, dude. Oh, is that good eating? Yeah. That's amazing. That's really good eating. Oh yeah, that's good. Cool. cool really good hey that's my first trigger fish since hawaii that's been like literally 10 years since i've caught something like this all right ladies and gentlemen mike is bagged up here we go <laughs> i'm the only one that doesn't have dinner. yeah <laughs> bobby's bobby's going hungry today we do have fresh squid though bobby there we go cool good start let's get another chunk down there there he is dude he hit it so hard he's through slack in the line there it is. Seems like it's coming up pretty easily. I am pretty powerful though. I think that's another trigger fish. Oh, it's no. black sea bass. What's that? Too small, but. Dang. All right, check him out. What's it got to be, 13? They're good eating. That's too small. Eat. That's cool. Black sea bass. What's that? Dude, it's 12 inches. I don't know if he's going to live, but. All right, y'all, it's time to chum. We're moving back up to our spot. We'll cut a bunch of this up, throw it out. This chum's gonna drift right down. I don't know. Bobby, caught a small, what was that called? A grunt. A grunt. Cut a big old chunk off of it. We're gonna throw that down there. We'll keep up with that, see if that develops into anything. It's kinda cool, catch your own bait out here too. No, I'm gonna drop a whole man Hayden down. Look at that. Not very much current. That could be. I got you. I'm still well, oh, double double. Vermilion or red? I think it's a red. No, it's a vermilion. That's a good one too. Roger. Oh, nice. Another eater. Another, Another eater. I got one too. Oh, sweet. That's small. Ooh. Got it. I <laughs> said got it. What do we got? You got you a vermilion. Do I really? Yeah. Hey. Hey, that's a keeper. Sweet. Look at that, guys. We've got us a vermilion snapper. That's gonna, it looks like it'll taste good. That's cool. That's really cool. Sweet, look at that ice box looking good. I'm glad I'm able to contribute as the newbie on board here. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. That's like right when it hit the bottom too. What's that? Right, right. Is that bait? Yeah. I'm gonna cut up a piece of this right here. This is a grunt, y'all. Look at the super red mouth. That's crazy. I never seen anything like that. 
Oh, that's good and fresh right there. Look, we're gonna take a big old chunk of that. Drop that down on our circle hook. That doesn't get anything. Well, now nah, that'll get something. There he is. Got him? Yeah. You got a snapper? Yep. Nice. That's a nice snapper. I mean, I know it's not the chunk you're after, but first snapper of the trip. All right, so since the snapper's a little bit small, Bobby's gonna send him down with this device, get him back down deeper, and it automatically releases, right? At like 30 or 40 feet? That's it does, that. it's got it's 50, 50, 100, and 150. So it's got oh, three cool. different settings. Oh, wow. So you just take it. Because if we try to drop him overboard right now, he won't make it down. He won't. Uh, won't make it down to 100 feet. So what we're gonna do is hook them here. Cool. And then drop them down. We got like a three pound weight on there. Okay. Three pound weight. So once it gets down to, I got this one set on 50. 50, okay. Once it gets down to 50, it'll just release it. Just release the jaw, that's pretty cool. All right, so that bottom. Theory it shouldn't be on there anymore. I don't know that it released. Yep, it did. Cool. See? Look at that. Fish gone. He'll live to get bigger and just catch next year. It's freaking ginormous weight. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. I've never seen a device like that. Richard's hooked up. Oh well, no. Oh look, look at that. Two fish right there. Yeah. What are those? Shark. Oh. That is right there. That's oh, lame. Oh. Here we're gonna stick them on. Got it. Stick to it. You got one too? Yep. Yeah. There we go. You know, it's been a hot minute since I hooked another fish here. We got, I see red. You do? Oh, vermilion, that's a good vermilion. Oh, dang gum, that's I'll take it. One. Swing them aboard, yes! Now we're cooking. That's a fat one too. Sweet, how big do, how big do these normally get? That's a pretty big one, man. That's really? Sweet, got that on a bit of mullet. Mike is loading the box. Not going hungry today. So, so cool. Hold up, I want to see what Richard got back here. Stick them to the side of your motor. Now, oh, that's cool. Hold them up to the motor. What they do is they typically put them on the Look like at that. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Look, see that thing that looks like a chute? Like yeah. Like a foot on their top? Yeah, I see it, yeah. Put it on your motor and you, you know, stick up there. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's insane. What? I've never seen anything like that. This is all new to me. That's cool. <laughs> Thanks. Are they good bait? Are they good to eat? Or are they just I like... Some, I've seen a couple people do a catch clean cooking on it. Really? Wow. It's cool all the stuff catching it, eh? Richard's got us all excited over here. Oh, I got one. I think mine's small, though. Oh, I gotta see some red. Heck yeah! What do you call it? Beeliner again? Woohoo! I'll take it. Look at that. Another beautiful fish. That, that red. You know when you see that red, you know that meat's gonna be good. Where have you been today? Shoo! Not real buggy today. Uh-oh, uh-oh, there he is. That's Holy cow. Oh my gosh, what a, that is a summer. That's the one we're looking for. Shady lady, oh, shady lady. Oh my goodness. That might be a big shark, dude. Good grief. Do we need to strap you in? You gotta at least see what it is at this point. Dude, if this is a red snapper, this is a monster breaker. I'm surprised it didn't like take off more. Yeah, it's a shark, I think. That is a big old shark. Good grief. Golly. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna need a bigger Holy. boat. Dude. Oh, no. Holy. It's getting bigger and Dude. bigger. Oh my Dude, god. Yo, <laughs> how did you get that big of a shark oh up? <laughs> Good. What kind of shark is it? Is, is that a nurse? Oh Dude, the tire the shark is what it is. <laughs> that thing's like god. six feet long. Okay. Yeah, that remorse sitting on the back. Holy. Oh Good god. lord have mercy. I got a, I got a video of this Adrian having a look. Oh gosh, winter dinner bill. Damn. <laughs> oh, did he pop you? Yeah, my arm. 
See, that's what I would have expected right there, like the, that run right there. Off now. That's pretty cool. Bobby, nice catch. <laughs> I don't know. You cut into my fishing time, but that's okay. Golly. That was crazy. I, I was like, there's no way this is something edible. Right. Uh, the one I mean, it's edible, but... What, what was that? What, five and a half, six feet long, yeah, would you say? Six feet long. Yeah, that's what I'll say. Yeah. Good knit. Shoo. All right, y'all. I think we're going to pack it up for the day because we've got like, what, an hour and a half boat ride back or so. Something like that. So it wasn't quite as good as we were hoping, but it sounded like some other boats were struggling listening to the radio. Got a decent box, though. Check that out. This is some beautiful fish. I'm really excited to give these bee lighters a try. That looks delicious. So... We can go ahead and try to make it on back and then i've got some kids i think that are super excited to uh try a little fresh saltwater fish catch you guys back at the house here we go back at the hacienda now i have been told that this fish right here is like super leathery so it can be a little bit difficult to get your knife in there so we're gonna see how true that is well you know what that old toadfish knife just kind of went right to work that wasn't bad the initial cut there'll be a link in the description below if you want to get your hands on this toadfish knife uh -huh, that wasn't bad we're just gonna fillet this trigger fish up i've actually never eaten trigger fish myself there we go hey well that doesn't look shabby at all right there that meat looks super good like it looks really clean that the rib cage right there we're just gonna cut that right out there we go might be a little bone left that's okay cool now what we're going to do though with our little vermilion snapper is we're not going to do much with it. We're going to start actually by scaling him. You know, I noticed I brought my gloves over and I haven't used them once. Oh well, just there for show, I guess. But we're going to start by scaling this snapper and we're going to cook this thing up whole. Cooking it up whole, y'all. Like, well, we might take the head off. All right, so we've taken all the scales off. What we're going to do is start back at the vent cut straight up slide that knife under the gill because you don't want the gills in there but i don't want to leave out like see there's a lot of meat right down there and right above the head so don't want to miss out on that clean that body cavity out thoroughly there we go that's looking pretty good last but not least we're gonna put slits in the meat on the outside that way our seasoning can work its way down into the meat just like that there you go we've got us some snapper as a trigger fish ready to go on the grill all right let's first start with our snapper just crack a little salt over him i'm gonna take the remainder of my fisherman's seafood spectacular i had subscribers send this to me probably one of the best seasonings i've ever ate though our time together was short it was sweet and fragrant, deliciously spent together in the bosom of my belly. This is getting weird, we'll stop that. Maybe even edit that out. The next seasoning we're going with is a seasoning I got at a little hole in the wall place down in Charleston. Now, the gentleman said there's a local guy that makes it, and you know it's good because it comes in these little Ziploc bags unmarked. He told me, do not use a lot. He said a lot goes a long way and do not salt the fish after you use this just a pinch is all that is needed he said it is super strong it's almost like an old bay seasoning except like five times as strong so i said well i gotta try this so we're just gonna go very lightly on both sides it costs like eight bucks in this little bag hmm i feel like they sell a lot of other stuff out of little bags like that but we're gonna go with it for now risk it for the biscuit what is life without a little bit of risk, you know? One, two, like that. I'm gonna take our snapper, drop him right in over the top of it, add a little more butter, like that. I'm gonna put the butter right on top of it. Now we're gonna go ahead and wrap this. Oh, you know what we're gonna do, actually? Hold on one second. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come out to my garden that really struggled this year. Anybody else have a struggling garden? My tomatoes are super late. My corn, I think I got like two ears of corn. Uh, the sunflowers did well. My raspberries are doing well. Oh, and my, you know what? I gotta say, my uh, peppers are doing well, but what happened to, uh, honey, baby cakes, hello. 
Stephanie? Anybody? What happened to my, what happened to my parsley, man? Um, hmm, okay. Well, you know, we got a little sprig of it here. Not very good looking, but I wanted something fresh from the garden. I guess that will have to do. Take this right over there, fish. I wonder why they call it a beeliner. Anybody know why they call it a beeliner? I never even asked Bobby or Richard why they call it beeliner, but who knows? Somebody tell me in the comments below. Got the grill heating up. We're just gonna drop that right in there like that and close it. Give that about 20, 25 minutes at 350 right now. So then we'll just keep an eye on it. That's what I do with a lot of this stuff. Just kind of eyeball it. We're gonna turn this burner on over here next though. Bring the butter, dollop of butter. Um, Yeah, that's what I wanna do. Dollop of butter, maybe a little bit more. Can't have too much butter. All right, in go the fillets of that trigger fish. Pretty thin fillets, so I'm just doing like a couple minutes on each side, maybe three minutes on each side. If I can actually grab the fillet. Yeah. Put some of our garden fresh parsley on that. Giving it that fancy touch that we so like doing here on the channel. All right, let's check our snapper here. Ooh, oh yeah, look at that. Woo. See that's all flaking out, bubbling on the bottom. I'd say that's about done. Been about 15, 18 minutes. That looks pretty good. Let's grab a fork here. Oop. Let's feel our meat here. See what that's like. It looks really good on the inside. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's done. Look at that. Hold up. Oh, tender white meat. Mm. Fork goes through it easily. Not gummy. That fish is done. We're gonna pull that off the grill and get to eating, ladies and gentlemen. First snapper ever on my channel. All right, here we go, people. Joining me today, Arabella Crockett. Guys, I'm excited. A little deep sea fish action. Should we give it a taste? That's Crockett. Would you pray for us really quickly first, please? Uh huh. All right. Yeah, they're from my family, Amen. Amen. Thank you, good sir. Here we go. A little trigger fish, Crockett. You gonna try some of that? That is trigger fish. What do you think, Bella? Try some of that trigger fish there. Oh, no, 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 after that, no, some of that now. Mm -mm -mm. Let's get a bite now of the snapper. Took a bite of that. Mm. How's that? Oh. Good? Oh my. Mm. With that butter in the bottom. Goodness, guys, I think it's getting ready to rain. We better hurry up and eat. Who wants another bite of what? Snapper? You want some trigger fish, Crockett? <laughs> Which one's your favorite, Mr. C? I like the trigger fish. You like the trigger fish better? Mm -hmm. I like I like that and that. You like them both? <laughs> hey, there you go. I like that. For me, I like the snapper. It's a little flakier. It's just a little, I don't know, more ocean fish tasty, which just is like a little bit richer. Don't proud so hands. Uh-oh, they are coming in. This is the south indeed. Uh -oh. That trigger fish tastes a lot better Probably though than I thought it would. Cat. Straight cat, not another one. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me the last couple of days. Hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, we will see you in the next one. That's right. <laughs>